I bushed. No wonder. Look at the time. Mm-hmm. Way past my bedtime. Uh-huh. Way past your bedtime, too. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. The apartment's on fire. Yeah, that's okay, sweetie. Ah, looks good from here. Really? Do you think that this is okay where it is, or would it be better over here? I think it would look better in bed. Charlie, come on, I can't think when you do that. And I can't do this when you're thinking. Charlie, come on, stop, stop. I've got a big meeting with the ad people first thing in the morning. This has to be perfect. Okay, no problem. Just give me a kiss for good luck, man. Okay. This is the first time I've snuck in anywhere in a long time. Oh, your voice. How's this? You're going to get me in big trouble with Myrtle. Mm -hmm. You know, she laid down the law when I moved in here. She said I couldn't have any members of the opposite sex in my room. I'm not opposite sex. I'm all for it. Trevor, shush. Will you relax? Red is no prude. The strict rules she has are for transients. So this, this reputable boarding house isn't known as a no-tell motel. So you're saying you don't think she'd mind if she knew you were here? I won't tell if you won't tell. I've been wanting to do this all day. Me too. It's quite a day, honey. Oh, but it's over. Yeah. It's peaceful and quiet. Almost, almost normal. If we didn't know better, huh? Mm. Feels good knowing Jamal's in the next room. Even though it's only for one night? Knowing that he's safe and sound in our house gives me a pretty together feeling. Me too. I just wish we knew what was going to happen to him tomorrow. I got good stuff tonight. Hey, man, you selling H? I'm fine. Yo, what's with this? Customer. Not dealing smoke tonight, little brother. I asked for H. You got me? Yeah, nothing but the best. Of course, it's not cheap. Not no nickels around here if that's what you're looking for. Nah, I got big money. Say, haven't I seen you someplace before? I get around. You selling or not? My little brother, you sure about this? Man, I'll take my money someplace else. Easy, kid. I got what you want. I keep the horse tied up over here. No, you can't do this. Leave him alone. children brought to you by new outdoor fresh bounce it leaves laundry smelling fresh for up to five days you're not taking him anywhere what's with you he's too young to do drugs you like him this young huh you go for babies shut up he's just a kid how old are you old enough works for me let him go he's not even a teenager i am too i just turned 13 this year older than i was when i started shooting come on my man what's your problem I'm going to do heroin. Man, how about doing something with your woman? If you can, that is. Let him go. Ain't none of your business. Look, I just want to talk to him. What is this? Are you some kind of closet social worker? Why don't you stand your back doing what you do best? Now, check this, Slim. You need to zip your lip. You're about to bite off more than you can scar. Easy, man, easy. Kid wants to score some smack. He's got a right to get high if he wants. 
Where are you going, girl? I just want to talk to him for five minutes. I'll be back. All right, you got five minutes. That's it. Don't take all his money. <laughs> joke, man. <laughs> That's a joke. Have you ever done drugs before? What's it look like? I don't know. That's why I'm asking. Have you? My mom used to do drugs. Does your mother know you're here? No, she's dead. What about your father? Does he know what you're doing? He couldn't care less. He's too busy scratching Tom and Livia to give a rat's tail about me. Tom and Livia? I don't want to talk about it. Nobody listens to me anyway. Hey, come on now. I'm listening. Big deal. Oh, come on, look. You're upset. You shouldn't be here. You don't belong here. You should be home. I don't have a home. Alex saw to that. Alec McIntyre? Are you the boy that Tom and Livia are trying to adopt? I read about you in the papers. You can't make me go back there. I won't go back there. I won't. Look, you're not going back in there. Leave me alone. Harry, come on. <laughs> I think I'm pretty good at reading Jamal, and for the life of me, I can't figure out how this is affecting him. Well, if they got a gene for courage, he's got it. He must have inherited it from his mother. Yeah, maybe. He thinks he's got a good chance of winning his lawsuit. I don't know what gave him that idea. Well, he could win. Yes, and he could just as easily lose. Do you think he understands that? You saw Trevor in court today. He did a, he did a wonderful job. Oh, Tom, we all did the best that we could. But he could still lose, and maybe we did the wrong thing by letting him get his hopes up. Have you heard, Alec? He's never going to let go of Jamal. We decided this. We're going to fight for as long as it takes. We love Jamal as much as he loves us, and we want to keep Alec from taking him away, and we will. Yeah. Yeah, Ben, I hear what you're saying. We got a shot. Okay, we have a good shot, but it's still a long way from being a sure thing. You know, I mean, it could go either way. I'm trying to relax, Ben. I really am. You know, I just, I want this, I want the damn thing over with. I want to get my son and I want to get on with our lives. Yeah. All right. Okay. Now, you're going to call me as soon as you hear anything, right? All right. Bye. Now, where is he? Where's who? Okay, you want to play hide and go see come game. Come out, come out, wherever you are. Look, uh, Mrs. Fargate, it, it, it's really nothing. I, I was practicing my ventriloquist act, that's all. Nice try. Oh, Trevor, I'm telling you, damn fool. What are you doing in there? I was just looking for, uh... Uh, an escape hatch. Yeah, 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 something like that. Yeah, yeah. and you're a member of the bar. No, uh, look, let me explain. It's not what you think. Trevor, you know my rules. Red, g give us a break here. I mean, Jane... Jane and I, we've been going out for weeks now. Well, what's the matter with your own house? <sighs> my own house? With, with Timmy and Amanda underfoot, and now my mother-in-law's pitching a tent there? I don't have a minute for myself. Come on, Red, I know you. You're a romantic, then. How about just this one time, just for me, huh? Well, if you promise to be very quiet. As church mice. 
You know, I don't want people to think that I break rules for one friend. So we can we can stay? For one hour. <laughs> and I mean one hour. Mm-hmm. After that, you're on the street with the other alley cats. Have you got it? Red, you're the greatest. Better believe it. One hour. A lot can happen in one hour. Hmm? Taking my breath away. I, uh, I take that as a compliment. You call that rusty? Well, it's kind of like riding a bike. What do you like at the top of your game, so to speak? Well, there's only one way to find out. Isn't it's never it? you're sweeping me off my feet. Well, that's the general idea, isn't it? Well, maybe I'm not ready to be swept. Sure you are. I've been thinking about giving you a good sweep for a little while now. Really? Oh, yeah. I've been attracted to you since my peepers first laid eyes on you. From the very beginning. Oh, yeah, right from the get-go. Well, our first meeting wasn't exactly... Well, it was it was pretty unusual. Well, call it weird. I mean, I thought you were following me. Every time I'd look up, there you'd be. You didn't think it was just your magnetic personality? <laughs> yeah, right. I guess you thought I was pretty strange, huh? Well, at first, and then you explained yourself to me, and I got to know you better, and I'm seeing you in a whole new light. A whole new light. Yeah. It's nice. I mean, your good opinion's very important to me. I don't feel this way about very many people. I mean, believe me, I care about you. You've become very special to me. I'm flattered. Well, I'm glad. I mean, you and, and your two wonderful children are, are very, very important to me. I feel happy for the first time in my life, and it's really being with you and yours that's done it. Hey. All of a sudden, we're doing an awful lot of talking here, and my hour's just scooting right by. Oh, is that a bad thing? No. No, 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 no. Look, I don't want you to feel rushed. I just, I want you to feel comfortable. I respect you, Jane. You get that, don't you? You've always been the consummate gentleman with me, Trevor. I'm sure Mrs. Fargate wouldn't have left us alone if she didn't think you were. Yeah, that was a real sweet gesture, wasn't it? <laughs> And look, I don't want that gesture to be going to waste. You know what I mean? I've got to get this done or I'll never get to bed at a decent oh, hour. Go to bed now, wake up early and finish. Oh, what? At 5 a.m.? Early to bed, early to rise. It gives Haley big luggage under her eyes. Come on, Haley, you're chairwoman of the board. I mean, you can do whatever you want, right? Yeah, okay. right, on the head mini skirt there. That's right. So, throw your weight around a little. Are you saying that I put on weight? No, I'm. I'm saying that you could delegate this morning meeting to somebody else. You could do that, right? Yeah, I could, but... But what? I love doing this, Charlie. Account executives, creative people, it, it gets my juices flowing. It's funny, that's exactly what you're doing to me right now. Charlie, will you stop it? You know what I'm talking about. I've never felt so creative in my whole life. Terrific. You don't sound like you think it's terrific. No, I'm... Look, whatever makes you happy makes me happy. Just a little surprise, that's all. At what? That I'm good at this? No, I knew you'd be good at whatever you put your mind to, which... It, it's just that... Well, I thought when Adam bought Enchantment and put you in charge that you were going to put the fix to McIntyre. Uh, don't remind me. My father tried to frame an innocent man. No, I think Alec and innocent in the same sentence is a contradiction. In okay, terms. fine. He's not a Boy Scout, but he's not a kidnapper either. Okay, maybe he's not. But I think that you more than made up for what Adam did to him by giving McIntyre his job back. So what are you doing still hanging around? Because it's so exciting. I mean, wor working in Enchantment again has just opened up a whole new world to me. I think I've really inherited Adam's flair for business. Especially where cosmetics are concerned. I mean, it's more than just paint and powder. 
it's design and marketing and, and distributing and all kinds of stuff. And I, I just love it. I can't get enough. You used to say the same thing about our business. I was younger then. So, so what, you think that being a private investigator is kid stuff? I didn't say that. Well, so what exactly are you saying? That I think I'm going to stick it out with enchantment for a while. And? And to see where it takes me. Do you have some sort of problem with that, Charlie? Uh, what did you think I was going to do exactly? I figured that you would fool around with this stuff for a couple weeks and have lunch with a bunch of phonies and get tired of it and come back to work with me where you belong. That's what I figured. Does it hurt? Not much. What happened? That doesn't matter. What's important is that nothing happens to you. Did somebody cut you? You called the cops on me? No, no, nobody cut me. It was an accident. Look, this place is crawling with creeps. You belong at home. I can't go home. I have no home. You don't know how it is. Yes, I do. Hey, I feel the same way. I can't go home either. Where I am, what I'm doing, who I'm with, it doesn't matter to anybody. Nobody cares. That's not how it is with you, Jamal. Not everybody wants you. They're fighting over you. That's what you went to court about, wasn't it? Tom and Livy are going to fight for me. Yeah, because they love you. But they're going to lose everything. What do you mean? It'll be expensive? Hey, so what? I know they don't care about that. But I do. It's not fair. They work so hard, and they're going to lose everything just because they want me? That stinks. I'm sure they don't see it the same way. Everything I love gets wrecked. Even if I win, I lose. It's not fair. I just don't care anymore. I don't. <laughs> if I didn't see with my own eyes, I never would have believed it. Believed what? Right around a little finger. It must be very uncomfortable to be wrapped that tight. <laughs> Shut Man, you don't shut your face. I'm going to show you uncomfortable. Uh, chill, man. No, you chill. This me again, I'm going to pound the spit out of you. Uh, Punk. Time's off. I'm not finished talking to him yet. I said stay out of it. No, I... But no or nothing. Don't give me no lip. We're out of here now. Now, where were we before we were so lewdly interrupted? Some H, I believe? Still got your cash? Excellent. Little man, this is your lucky day. You want me to quit enchantment? I figured the gig was temporary, okay? As soon as you got McIntyre's job back, I... Assumed you'd come back to work with me. You know, two weeks ago, I would have thought the same thing. I never had any interest in business before. I, it always seemed so dry and boring, but it's not. Point of view, I suppose. Absolutely. Uh, before, I was always on the outside looking in. But now I'm on the inside. It's completely fascinating. And here's the shocker for you. I'm really good at it. And that's not a point of view. Those, those people at Enchantment really think I'm smart. That doesn't surprise me. You're one of the brightest people I've ever known. I mean, they're together. There isn't a case we couldn't crack. Charlie, let's face it. I mean, whenever there was a case, not that there were cases that often, but whenever we had a case, you could have easily solved them yourself. Not so. Yeah. Remember the trucker that you got the goods on when we were tracking Hugo Merrick's body? I couldn't get a thing out of him. You opened him up like, you know, like crack a couple of eggs. One time. Big deal. Charlie. Charlie, look. Valley Investigations is a one-man operation. There's just not enough work for two investigators. So look, I mean, uh, things are slow right now, right? But that's, that's going to change. Charlie, I can't do slow. I can't. I, I, I need to be busy. I, I can't just sit around waiting for something we're, to happen while I'm doing nothing. We are, not, we are not sitting around doing nothing. No, you know what? You're absolutely right. We sit around playing with all those stupid toys you brought to keep us from going crazy. I thought you liked that kind of stuff. 
I do. I do, Charlie, but not for a career. Listen to me. Listen to me, please. I just had the battle of all battles with Adam, and I'm through with him now, and I'm glad, but it's really hard. Now, you've got to listen to me. You've got to understand. I can't not be busy. I need to be busy right now. I can't sit around and play the piano or toss darts waiting for something to happen because it gives me too much time to think about myself. And sooner or later, I'm going to reach for a drink, something that's 80 proof, okay? Enchantment is hopping. It keeps me busy. I don't have time to dwell on my own problems. Well, I guess my loss is Alex Kane. You know, you know, the really strange part is, I really think that I inherited Adam's mogul gene. No. The mogul gene? Oh, my God. The transformation Adam. has begun. You are turning into Adam. No. Oh, it is... No. I don't think so. Would Adam be able to do this? Dylan, you are terrible. What, what, what? You, you just tried to make me lose my balance. Well, the bed would have broken our fall. I may be one of the last remaining old-fashioned girls in this world, but my mother taught me to keep both feet firmly planted on the floor. Yeah, and the door open, a book's with while there's a man in the room. I got you. I knew you'd understand. Uh, yeah, I, I, I admit it. I was, uh, I was getting carried away. I was giving you the rush. I can't tell you how close I just came to letting you do that. You're so powerful. So attractive. I, I just... I almost couldn't help myself. I hope I haven't discouraged you too much. Not a chance. I mean, to be honest with you, I mean, if things keep going the way they have between us, anything's possible. Anything? Anything. That sounds good to me. You go at your own speed. We'll take it just the way you want. You're the most wonderful man I've ever known. I just wish that my mother, God rest her soul, could have met you. I, I know she would have approved. Just so long as you do. some smart mouth kid who's hired a lawyer to divorce you. That's not true, Jamal. You know, do you know what I see when I look at you? I see myself a long time ago. Listen, I know exactly what it feels like to be a kid who wants to grow up fast and get away from everybody who's telling him that he's nothing and that he's always going to be nothing. Man, that's the dream that kept me going. You think you're the only one? Every time my old man would take the strap to me, that's all I'd do. I'd close my eyes and I'd think to myself, I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to be an adult. I'm going to move out. I'm going to have a place of my own and I'm going to live my life my way. Yeah. Think about that. Maybe we're not so different. Jamal, I... I, I, I don't know how to try to get through to you. I, I wouldn't do this to you. I wouldn't put you through this if I didn't really believe that it was right. If I just deep inside didn't feel that having you in my life and having us be together was right. You know something? You know what your mom used to say about taking a chance on somebody? She, she... She, she said it was like you take your heart and you put it in your hand and you hold it out and you say, here, this can be broken now. Well, that's what I'm doing. You can break my heart. You can. 
But I swear to you, Jamal, I will never hurt you. I swear. I need you. I really do. And I think... I'm, I'm hoping... that you need me too. What do you say? How, how about just giving us a chance? I'm gonna fix it. I'm gonna make it all up to you, Jamal. Mm, when I count my blessings, you are at the top of my list. You're at the top of my list, too. Mm. You know, I don't think I could go through this with anybody else. What we're going through right now would have buried most marriages. But not ours. Mm. Why do you think that is? We're so much alike. <laughs> yeah, right. Mm. We are. We think alike. We feel the same way about Jamal and what his future ought to be. Mm. If we didn't feel that way, this whole mess would be driving us apart right now. Instead, it's made us so much stronger. It's made us grow so much closer. Closer. Mm. Mm. You got me hearing bells, oh, sweetheart. You're so chilly. <laughs> oh. the private line? Oh, it's business. Can't be Terrence. Do mm, you know any other one? You gonna get it. Uh, if it's anybody important, they'll call back tomorrow. This is a client. I'm busy. Mm. Pick up. Come on. Come on, Tom. Anybody, come on. Somebody, pick up. Please, please. Yeah, I'd like the number for um, Alec McIntyre in Pine Valley. Are you deaf, girl? What did I tell you? What are you gonna beat me with a telephone now? I ought to beat you for running your smart mouth. Forever telling me what you will and what you won't do, where you will and where you won't go. Now I done had about all the lip I'm gonna take out of you. Go ahead, go on, make it look like the other side. Go on! I've got to call that boy's father. He's going to be worried sick. It ain't none of our business. You want to bring the heat down on our heads? Cause all kinds of trouble. Look, I can't stand by and watch a 13-year-old kid get hooked on heroin or kill himself. Give me the phone. Give me the phone! before it's too late. Make it quick. And be careful what you say! Oh, the machine. Come on, come on, beep already. Mr. McIntyre, Jamal is in an abandoned building down by the water. 232 Front Street. Hurry, he's in big trouble. you got exactly enough to drop the attitude how much horse do you want however much this will get no let me hold it i'm not gonna rip you off let me hold it ah ulysses my man be back later hey where are you going hey hey easy you must think i'm a fool give me my stuff or give me my but money back 
You got your own setup, little man? Huh? No, I didn't think so. That's where I was going. You do want a relatively clean needle, don't you? I'll be back. Yo! Whoa! Lucky, my man. Hey, who's too many do? <laughs> Just some kid who wandered in here wanting to score some H. He's a little young, ain't he? Hey, his 50 bucks says he's as old as he wants to be. But there's something about him. I swear I've seen him someplace before. Keep an eye on the kid for me, Luxter. Fine, you cool? Mm, I think the AC is just a little bit too high. Mm -hmm. As long as you're up. It is too late for snacking. I wasn't going to ask you for anything. Oh, please. You were going to ask me to get you a dish of ice cream. A little one. As soon as I check on tomorrow. Honey, am I becoming too predictable? Well, the hour's almost up. Yeah, I guess I better skedaddle before I turn into a pumpkin, huh? I'm glad we had a chance to talk. Yeah, me too. You sure you weren't disappointed that we didn't? Oh, look, the way I look at it, love's a lot like ketchup. The longer it takes to get to the plate, the better it tastes. I'll remember that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Good night. Good night. I gotta get rid of this thing someday. Yeah. Trevor, it's Tom. Yeah, Tom, what's up? So we got some trouble. Jamal's missing. Are you sure? Yes, I'm absolutely sure. You sure he's not playing hide and seek? You know what a kid or the kid can do. No, no, no. We, we looked all over the house. We looked outside. He's nowhere. Can you get over here? Yeah, I'll be right over. Jamal disappeared? Yeah, I gotta go. Had a great time. <laughs> oh, you are too much. Old-fashioned girl. Don't you think that's a bit of a stretch? Trevor didn't think so. Well, maybe Trevor bought it this time. But what about next time? What are you going to do if he wants to get married? Hold hands? <laughs> Marriage to Trevor? That's the furthest thing from my mind. What do you call that face sucking you were doing in here? Isn't that how good old fashioned girls lure their intended to the altar? Trevor is Amanda's father. This all boils down to having access to Amanda. I get it. You were going to keep your hands on Amanda by letting Trevor put his hands all over you. Brilliant. You make it sound so sleazy. Trevor's not like that. I mean, he got to first base this time. I'm sure he'll expect to be sliding into second next time, or he'll figure something's wrong. All right, all right. Then comes third base before you know it. I get the point. And then he'll be heading for home. Score! You're disgusting. What did you think would happen? I mean, the man lost his wife a year and a half ago. He's probably climbing the walls by now. How much longer did you think you could hold him off? I'll hold him off as long as I have to. I mean, I can't have sex with him. He might remember. You really think you're that special? It wasn't until we were intimate that Trevor started to realize I wasn't natty. Well, it's no surprise. The man's used to filet mignon. You give him ground chuck, it's just not going to cut it. I made that mistake last time. I'm not going to make it again. I'll just be more careful. I mean, there's too much at stake here. I'm not going to risk losing it over a roll in the hay. Go on, you might as well. After all, the proverbial you-know-what's just about to hit the fan anyway. What do you mean? Come on. You don't see it? Laurel's already got Tim hating you. And it was even easier to turn Wilmer around on you. <laughs> that hateful little cow hasn't changed a lick, has she? She still makes it her mission in life to make your life miserable. And she doesn't even know you're her darling daughter. Everybody's against you. That's not true. 
Oh, I guess you do have a couple of friends. There's Kendall Hart and Alec McIntyre. The two town pariahs. Well, the three of you make quite a trio. Alec. I almost forgot. Jamal's missing. The kid means the world to him. I looked everywhere. I looked under the sink. I thought maybe he'd gone down to the basement. I checked down there, nothing. When did you first discover that he was missing? I, I, I went to check on him before we went to sleep, like I always do. I called you immediately. And then I picked you guys up. That's 10, 15 minutes. What, when did Jamal go to bed? Maybe an hour well, before that. So he's got an hour, an hour and a half head start. Tops. Did anything unusual happen when you got back from the hearing? No. I can't think of anything, Tom. No, everything seemed normal, I mean, considering. We tried to have a, a regular evening at home. We had dinner, we watched a little TV. We tried not to talk about the lawsuit at all. Look, think, there must be something, okay? It doesn't have to be anything big. Uh, even the littlest thing could set somebody off. I really can't think of anything. Did you talk about the case at all? Yeah, we talked about it a little bit before we turned in, but Jamal was upstairs. He came down for a sandwich. Oh, no, you don't think. Oh, Tom, he heard us. Heard what? We were talking about the litigation and how long it could take and how much it was going to cost us. Yeah, but I, if, he, if he overheard, don't you think he would have said something? No, no, because every time he started worrying, we were always telling him to just stop it because, you know, we treated him like he could turn his emotions on and off like a faucet. Blaming yourself isn't going to help anybody right now. The three of us have got to get out on the street and see what we can find. Did you notify, notify the police? I called Derek right after I called Trevor. He said he's going to round up Terrence and Taylor and do all he can. Let's go. Look, he couldn't have gotten far without money. He's got money. Oh. There's a $50 bill missing from my purse. Miss me? Like crazy, man. What'd you bring me? Huh? Yeah, I don't recall you crossing my palm with any dinero. This stuff is for super flea over there. Did you figure out where you know him from? Not yet, but I will. Maybe he was in your daycare group. <laughs> You're a funny guy, Lucky. Yo! Short stuff. Hey, Candyman's here. Come on. I never forget a face. That's that little pig drop in that bronze brick off my skull when I was trying to teach that Dylan kid a lesson. He got me busted. What are you gonna do? What are we hiding? Bust him up. No, I'm not gonna lay a finger on him. He wants to ride the horse. I'm gonna let him. I'm gonna give him the ride of his life. <laughs> I'm gonna get him so freaking high he ain't never coming down. <laughs> There. Nobody goes anywhere until you explain that look you just gave each other. When you said Jamal had money, look, I don't want to say anything that's going to alarm you guys. We're, we're already alarmed, Trevor. A lot of bus companies have specials during the summer. With 50 bucks, he could go anywhere in the country. Okay, look, Haley and I will check the bus depot. And then the train station. I'm going to stop by my house and see if Tim knows anything, okay? That's a good idea. He might have told Tim something that he wouldn't tell us. So what do we do? You two stay put in case he shows up here. Now, let's go. Look, keep your chins up, okay? We're going to find him. Don't worry. Thanks. Jane! Hi. What can I do for you? You haven't heard? Haven't heard what? Come on in. I, I was with Trevor Dibble Dillon a little while ago, and Mr. Cuddy, he called and said that Jamal was missing. What? Yeah, they think he ran away. Oh, great. I'll be right back. Did he say how long he was gone? 
They don't know. You know, you've got a message on your machine. Don't worry about it. I'll get it later. Come on. You got the stuff? Yeah. But cheer up. I got it right here. Is any good? Any good? Did you hear that luster? Superfully wants to know if it's any good. <laughs> <laughs> You're a funny guy. <laughs> yeah, I think you'll be pleased. Very pleased. <laughs> Bye, Lucky. <laughs> Beat it. <laughs> Coming up, David has a surprising announcement for Vicky. Don't miss One Life to Live next.